Hello. So I wanted to run everyone through uh, some of the changes that I've made to the budget. Blue green morph deck. I've seen some articles this week written about it. Uh, they call it the all-in morph deck. So apparently at the future, future league was kind of playing around with it. Uh, just to do some testing to see if the morph mechanic was tier one, tier two, etc. They said some with some of the changes that they were seeing further along the line that that was possibly sometimes tier one. Hmm, I don't know. Seems a little too synergistic to be a tier one deck. It really requires a lot of the parts in place. But anyway, because of Fate to Reforge, I made some changes and added some new cards. So thought I would kind of run you through those uh, real quick and uh, just walk you through that right now. Um, I think the big changes to the mana base are um, I took out two Temple of Mysteries uh, and added two Tomb of the Spirit Dragon. I think it's an interesting card. I don't. I think that two might be too much. Um, it's really important to get blue out early, and I might actually switch up some of the mana bases here, uh, get rid of some forests and add some islands. But 24 lands. Um, the biggest change is just removing Temple. I got rid of all of the Elvish Mystics. I just every time I got them, it just uh, it was nice sometimes to play a turn th two morph, but uh, usually I wanted to wait until the secret plans or the trailer mystery were in place. So uh, I cut those, and what I added in place of that um, are the reality shifts. The reality shifts is the hard removal exile target creature its controller manifest the top card of his or her library. Um, I found this card to just be extraordinary. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's Teemer. Teemer has that uh, mythic creature that's uncounterable, makes your creatures uncounterable, comes in flash at the end of the turn, um, and you'll actually see it in play in this next game or uh, example I'm going to show. Just how much people will hold off playing cards against me because of it. Um, and then I added mm -hmm. a clever personator mm -hmm. and removed the um, Hydra. There's like a Serpent Hydra card. I'm sorry, I've had a long day. I can't remember exactly the name of the card right now. But um, those are really the big changes. Nothing else, really. So I think uh, what I want to do here really quick is run me through the games. Or one of the games the one I just played tonight. Uh, if I can get this thing to work, that is. it up already? Seems that it is. All right. So I'll just kind of quickly run through this. You see he starts off early with doing some despises against me. Uh, he keeps kind of looking back for creatures and he does get some, does remove a few of the creatures that I had. But as you see it doesn't really matter. <clears throat> First morph and a trigger off of a trail of mystery. The triggers off a trail of mystery and uh, secret plans are just extraordinary. Um, just the amount of card advantage you get um, with the morph mechanic is great, particularly with the uh, morph creature. It's a zero six that uh, morphs for just uh, showcasing a blue or. Um, showing a blue card in your hand because it's free and you end up doing card draw off it and pump so it's great dragon's eye savants that's the card i'm talking about and here is where he's trying to get me to counter he knows i have counters in my hand and uh, we know that in his hand, well, we'll know what's in his hand here in a moment. Because I think I'm revealing ahead of uh, information from previous in the game. So uh, I didn't want to look at his hand yet. Um, I just was kind of pushing in with the dragon's eye savant. I end up uh, flipping it here, which is ahead. Oh, we didn't see if we can look at what was in his hand there. Well, he had the un counterable guy in there. So he's trying to get me to use the reality shift over and over again here. Here's all these triggers going off. I chose to put the Dragon's Eye Savant back in my hand just because I've got the card draw that I get from it. 
and then block. Uh, I didn't really too, care too much about losing the Ice Feather Agent. The Agents of Fate, a little bit problematic, um, but because of the prop to crop, I'm able to uh, lay down another creature that can be sacrificed. In this case, I'm laying down the uh, Dragon's Eye Savant and then morphing it quickly. So I'm getting triggers on uh, getting three cards I get to draw, plus pumping the Dragon's Eye Savant. He's not on his attack turn, but it does hold him back from attacking. And there I actually chose to use uh, the reality shift because I have another one. Um, I drew into it, and that was the big reason there. I didn't want to use the other reality shift because I know that he has the Dragon Master. Dragon Master? I need to know what that card is called. I'm sitting here doing a tutorial and I don't know the name of what card is. There is Dragon Claw. Sorak Dragon Claw is the card. This is kind of like a little bit more of a difficult decision. I chose to put that uh, back into his hand simply because if I would have blocked, I would have lived, but he would have it would have morphed back down on the battlefield again. And I wanted him to have the hard cast, and I wanted it off the board for the rest of this turn, considering where his mana base was at that time. And as you see, he has a lightning strike in his hand. As well as two Sark Dragon Claws. But I've got him down to a point where I'm not too worried. This is where the Storm Breath Dragon I counter the Lightning Strike. And uh, it's kind of game over at that point. He concedes. Overall, I think it was a pretty good game. Let me look at his Exile Zone. His Never got a, he never cast uh, Sonic Dragon Claw in this game. But we'll move on to game two. There we go. It's always nice to have a Ghost Fire Blade on turn one. Having two of them is a little excessive, but um, I actually do. I think the Ghost Fire Blade is a really effective card. Um, sometimes it sucks when I throw the Ghost Fire Blade on and then they uh, use a charm on it. I guess it's got a toughness 4, but. This one's where I'm just beating him down with the 6 6 Morph creature. Nothing more than a monastery block in disguise, which is a lot of fun. So this is where he starts bringing out the dragon claw uh, in attempts to block, and I just start exiling his dragon claws. Have the opportunity here to uh, counter it with uh, Karu Spell Snatcher, which means I'll get to cast it on uh, right away. Uh, without using its mana cost. So, he concedes. Um, that's a great uh, late game finisher card, uh, particularly around that where they're playing one card um, that's, that they're trying to win the game with. But. Well, anyway, it was just a really quick recap of some of the changes in one game example of this deck. Um, I'm a little bit exhausted from work today, so I'm going to be going to bed now. But 
hope you enjoyed that quick game.